For over 3,000 years, a story has lain hidden beneath the sands of Egypt. A story we are only now beginning to reclaim. It is a story of a time we call the New Kingdom. It left us the greatest treasures of the ancient world. An extraordinary legacy in papyrus, stone, and gold. But behind these treasures lies an epic tale of real people. People like Ramesses the Great, Tutankhamun, the boy king, and one of the most beautiful and powerful women of the ancient world, Queen Nefertiti. It is a story brought to life by their own words and those of the ordinary men and women who would change the course of history. In eyewitness accounts, soldiers describe the birth of an empire forged on the battlefield. Pharaohs record how they created their own legends and became the richest rulers in the world. An ancient craftsman reveal how they turned Egypt's unimaginable wealth into tombs, temples, and treasure. And how in the end, they would be forced to destroy the very tombs they had built. This is the story of the rise and fall of Egypt's golden empire. Over a thousand years after the pyramids were built, the greatest chapter in Egypt's history was just beginning. The New Kingdom, an explosion of creativity, wealth and power. It would be the envy of civilizations to come. The Greeks, the Romans, Napoleon, all would look for inspiration to the men and women who built the first empire in recorded history. Yet the Golden Age might never have happened. In 1560 BC, Egypt was in crisis. For the first time in history, the kingdom of the ancient pyramid builders was now occupied and divided. Egypt was on the verge of extinction. In the north, a foreign king had invaded and declared himself Pharaoh. His people, the Hyksos, now occupied the rich Nile Delta. To the south, the warlike Nubians threatened the last remnants of Egypt. The invasion of the Hyksos to Egypt was really a shock, a surprise, because this is the first time that Egypt was completely invaded. This is the first time that a strange people entered in Egypt and lived for 150 years. The Egyptian royal line and its city, Thebes, had fallen on hard times. But one local family was determined to revive Egypt's former glory. The king of Thebes and his two sons, the young princes, Kamos and his brother, Akmos. The fate not only of their capital, Thebes, but Egypt itself lay in their hands. Essentially, it was a time of great trial for the traditional ruling family of Egypt. And the Thebans are really just pawns in this uh, between these two superpowers. They are not the superpower. So really, Ahmoza and Kamoza had become uh, minor princes. And there was a feeling that Egypt, as it had been known for the past 1,500 years, could cease to exist.
Kamos and Akmos's hatred of the Hyksos was personal. Their father tried to rebel against the invaders in the north. He paid a terrible price. Three and a half thousand years later, his corpse still bears witness to his brutal slaughter at the hands of the enemy. The face is grisly, partly because it wasn't well preserved, and there are many, many axe marks all over the head. It must have been Hyksos' struggle, and it must have been um, fairly bloody. Traditionally, Egyptians viewed foreigners as primitive and barbaric. 